And that really was that. What is Mikey doing here exactly? I think his point, and the usual flat earther stance on this, is that his phone is denser than the air around it, therefore it falls. Well, okay, but my phone is also denser than the air above it. In fact, if you want to be really technical about it, and really accurate, the air above it is very, very, very slightly less dense than the air below it. So why doesn't a phone move upwards if that's the case? Glad you asked this, Daniel. Since you are Simon and Dan and you claim to know so much about science and physics, it's weird that you would ask such a rudimentary question. Have you never ever heard of potential energy? Anyway, let's go to the basics. You see, this is Simon and Dan holding his cell phone. Was his cell phone automatically in his hand? No, he had to pick it up. Now, what's going to happen when he's going to lift the phone? What happened? He imparted potential energy to the phone. Now, when he lets go, what's going to happen? It's going to turn to kinetic energy and thus it sinks or falls and depends on opinion. So yes, we see the phone is denser than the medium it is submerged in. Why would you expect it to go up just because it's less dense? It's still denser than from where you picked it up. Hence, it's out of its equilibrium. You know when it's on the ground it's in static equilibrium or in your hand. Again, static equilibrium because you are supporting. So once you let go of the phone, you can no longer support it. Thus, the potential energy has turned to kinetic energy and seeks its relative equilibrium. The phone moves down for a reason. Why don't you ever think about that one, Mikey, yeah? Well, there we go, a brilliant look into the... So, why doesn't a phone move upwards? The phone moves down for a reason.